first, let's go ahead and go to Eric Margulies. He's the author of War at the Top of the World and American Raj. And uh, right now he's on the phone from Paris, France. How's it going, Eric? It's uh, just fine, Scott. Uh, we're French rioting. Uh, everybody's in a big uproar here, but uh, Paris is still beautiful. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad to know somebody's rioting about something. I don't know. Americans never riot when I think they ought to be rioting, you know? No, well, that's right. Well, the French have a tradition of street theater and taking politics to the street, and all the left-wing unions are, are on the warpath here against President Sarkozy and his right-wing coalition. Uh, and uh, things have been very tense here with the cutoffs of fuel supplies, uh, cancellations of flights, trains, plane, you know, buses, uh, the metro in Paris. It's, uh, we don't know which way things are going to go right now. They could get ugly or things could sort of uh, die down. I always think the French are a great example of how you can absolutely, completely destroy your government and you can still be France. Paris is still Paris. As uh, Richard Mayberry said, the wheat still grows in the fields outside of Paris and they're on their fifth republic. So we could absolutely and completely destroy Washington, D.C. We could tear down that obscene Washington Monument and the White House and the rest of it and we could still be the USA. Scott, you know, I have to say that our, our founding fathers, um, who look wiser and wiser as time goes on, uh, meant the government to be a part-time job. Uh, they, the senators and congressmen and things were supposed to be businessmen and farmers, and uh, they would go to Washington occasionally and transact the business that had to be done and then pack up and go back home. Uh, strictly part-time job. Instead, we've ended up with a class of mandarins uh, who spend their whole time fundraising and doing not much else. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a. It's just an imperial court is all it is. You know, I had a, a bumper sticker on my truck that's a quote of Thomas Jefferson saying, the spirit of this country is totally adverse to a permanent standing army. And I remember somebody walking by my truck and didn't know I could hear him, completely stumped and literally scratching their head and saying, as this woman says to the guy she's walking her dog with, well, maybe it's meant to be ironic or something. <laughs> well, before we get to Pakistan, I have one other Thomas Jefferson quote that I always think of here, and I'm talking to you as I look at the Eiffel Tower, and that is, every man has two countries, has two homelands, his own and France. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did say something like that, old Thomas Jefferson crazy old slave rapist that he was all right so um yeah let's talk about pakistan you know what teach me about pakistan give me kind of a a broad something or other about the country then we can go back and talk about the last 10 years of war against them and and where we are now and all that but um you know george carlin has that joke about it you're listening you're cleaning up around the house and the news is on and something blows up in pakistan which actually I think he was referring to the Union Carbide explosion. There's 6,000 people killed in an explosion today, and you say, where, where? And the news guy says, in Pakistan, and he says, ah, screw Pakistan. That's too far away to be any fun. And uh, it's too far away, really, for people to care about at all, I think. So I was hoping you could bring it a little bit closer to us, Eric. Well, we Americans have, a, you know, we suffer terribly from geographical and historical illiteracy thanks to our, our, our very poor educational system, watching too much television, reading too little. So uh, Americans have a faint grasp, many Americans have a faint grasp of foreign affairs. Pakistan was created in 1947. The British uh, took their Indian empire, pulled out because they'd gone bankrupt, the British empire, and uh, India was divided by the British at the request of, the, of, of its Muslim minority into two countries, India and Pakistan, uh, which was in two parts, East and West Pakistan. And uh, it, Pakistan has been under military rule ever since, uh, for, fifth, for half of its life, since 1947. It was founded as to be a beacon of purity and moral rectitude for the Muslim world, uh, and it turned out to be an absolute uh, god-awful mess, uh, corrupt. It's run by a feudal aristocracy, feudal landlords. Uh, politicians are bought and sold. There was never real democracy in Pakistan. It does have a very good, free, loud, strong media press, I must say. I used to write for one of the Pakistani newspapers, Dawn. And uh, it's a very vibrant, boisterous country, but it's 
it's barely a country. It's made up of uh, of different regions, uh, four main regions, uh, which is Punjab, which is the largest, most important, Sindh in the south, uh, northwest frontier province, uh, as it used to be called, Pashtun area, uh, and uh, then Baluchistan, which is often the towards the Iranian border. And they speak different languages and they have different cultures in these areas. And uh, it's it's a tough call holding the country together. Well, and I guess one part of the legacy of the British disaster there is they do have a strong tradition now of a parliamentary government of a somewhat independent judiciary and and uh, you know Western forms of law. It seems like actually a lot of times, you know, the worst terrorists get put on trial there. They have a, a better dedication to the rule of law than we do a lot of times, it seems. Well, I've been, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say much good about the Pakistani legal system. It's totally corrupt. Uh, and one of the reasons that uh, militants uh, who've been advocating Islamic law are so popular, not only in Pakistan, but across the Muslim world, is that under Islamic law, you get fair, speedy trials, often with draconian results. But the sentences, but uh, you have swift uh, justice that can't be bought. Pakistan hitherto, everything was bought. However, uh, under the last military dictator, General Musharraf, uh, the chief justice of the Supreme Court staged a revolution, literally, and uh, had demanded that the rule of law be imposed. And he's still fighting, as we speak today, against the current, current U.S. installed government of Asif Zadari, uh, trying to bring these corrupt politicians to book and charge them with a massive corruption of which they are egregiously uh, guilty. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talked a few weeks back, we were counting the days till the military coup d'etat. hasn't happened yet, huh? Uh, no, it, well, it, it has, and it, it, it's, as I think I said on, uh, on your program, it's a sort of slow motion coup d'etat in the sense that the real power in Pakistan, power has shifted to the military, run by Chief of Staff General Kiani, who was engineered into the position by the U.S. Uh, his tenure was just extended, an unprecedented act for the Pakistani Army, which is a very, very disciplined force, uh, engineered under pressure from Washington. And uh, that's the real government. The, the foolish, the bumbling, corrupt politicians in Islamabad uh, have no respect. Uh, they have almost no power, but they're still carrying on the pretense that Pakistan is a democratic government. Uh, here's the thing. Um, well, what I was going to ask you was, uh, this guy, Zadari, the current prime minister, is it true they've really renamed him from Mr. 10% to Mr. 20%? That's his cut of any business deal that goes on in the country? Well, if my memory's correct, his father used to be called Mr. 20%, and, uh, he said 10%, but 10% is an awful lot. <laughs> yeah. Zadari, All right, hold yeah. it, hold it there. Hold it there. Okay. We'll be right back, everybody, with Eric Margulies after this. All right, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. I'm Scott Horton. I'm talking with Eric Margulies. He's a regular guest on this show. He's the author of War at the Top of the World and American Raj, Liberation or Domination. His website is ericmargulies.com. Just spell it like Margolis, and it'll come right up for you there. He also writes at uh, lourockwell.com, and you can find him all over the place. And now, uh, Eric, we're talking about uh, the current American puppet prime minister of Pakistan, uh, Zadari, I know he's got no public support, but does he have any actual authority as prime minister, or really the ISI and the military just run the country? Um, he has uh, very little authority. In fact, what he had uh, uh, legally as president was uh, he gave up fairly recently under public pressure. Uh, many people believe he has mental problems, too. In fact, he said as much when he was in a legal deposition a few years ago. He'd spent a lot of time in jail under the Musharraf regime, and uh, he suffered consequently. But uh, he has very little power, but uh, he's being kept there in office until Washington can confect uh, another uh, democratic uh, government uh, that looks fairly kosher. Uh, we'll meet the bill of having a democracy there because Washington... 